Kai Havertz sends Arsenal to the top of the English Premier League with a late clutch bullet header from across from Ben White. It was an enthralling game of football with ups and downs, trials and tribulations. But Arsenal go top, eight wins on the bounce. Kai Havertz scoring four games on the bounce. He never did that in the Premier League as a Chelsea player. And there are a lot of hurt people right now. There are a lot of destroyed narratives. There are a lot of people saying, there are a lot of people saying, were we wrong about the signing of this man winning goals, goals in title runs, clutch moments? He may not pass the eye test. He may not be your or my or anybody's cup of tea, but he was purchased to win games. He was bought in to help make Arsenal champions of England. And that's the second time, I think, maybe even the third time he's got a winner. Not, he, not his first big and important goal for Arsenal. And what a moment to step up. What a moment to come alive. What a moment to really stand up and be delivered as an Arsenal player, a Premier League player, a £65 million player. Now, Arsenal, it was an interesting game for you today. Arsenal were the better team by a country mile. Arsenal were cruising in that first half. I thought it was fairly simplistic, fairly simplistic for them. However, a really poor, a really poor moment from Aaron Ramsdale, one that was actually predicted by Don Hassam on Straight Facts yesterday, gifts Brentford a route back into this game, and it knocked Arsenal. Arsenal were playing hard. They were moving the ball well, but it knocked Arsenal. There was just an element of their killer edge had got, their killer instinct had gone. They'd been dulled. They'd been, just, their little edge was taken away. They lost the eye of the tiger. And Brentford suddenly had belief. Suddenly had belief. Ivan Tony takes a shot from distance. What a save that was by Ramsdale. There was a header, I think, from Collins late. Late in the game, Ramsdale comes up trumps again. And you're sitting there and thinking, wow, is that mistake that so many rivals predicted, so many rivals hoped for, is it going to scupper Arsenal? Are Arsenal going to drop the points? Are they going to be ridiculed? Will they be called bottle jobs again? Not on your Nelly. I've been telling you about this Arsenal team now for the best part of two years, they're different. They're a different animal. Yes, they'll drop points from time to time, but more often than not, they're going to win their games. And of course, this wasn't as relaxed and as entertaining probably for Gooners as the Sheffield United games, the West Ham games. This was far more nerve-wracking, far more nail-biting, but in so many ways, much more rewarding. The euphoria, the confidence, the mentality to persevere through some real adversity in this game is needed. Not every game was going to be 4 5 6 nil. There'll be some gooners, there'll be some rivals that will say, well, didn't score four or five goals. It's not that good a performance. You have, to, you have to do it late on. That's what title winners do. We praise City for it. We praise Liverpool for it. We should be praising Arsenal for it as well. But... From my perspective, look, I think it was a good performance from Arsenal. I wouldn't say it was amazing. I think their approach play, the way they held onto the ball, the opportunities they created were good. But I do feel for large parts of the game, you know, to only have 15 shots, I think it was, maybe a few more in the end. Uh, what, what does the stats say here? 17 shots. I, I think with, with as much of the ball as they had, 72% possession, the amount of passes in the final third, I do feel as though... They should have created more goal-scoring opportunities, had more guilt edge chances, forced second into more saves. I mean, Ramsdale probably had to pull off the better saves in this game. So there's definitely some food for thought, definitely some uh, reflection here for Arsenal. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. But there were some standout performances. Of course, Kai Havertz, as I've already mentioned, he has silenced so many of his critics. I'm sure Lee Gunner is there with the stag. He's doing it now. He ain't saying 29 anymore. I'm only joking. I'm sure there are people that just are they're blown away by, by, by the moment. But when it comes to the agendas, he's silencing people. Four games he scored in. 
winning goals, clutch goals. The amount of Chelsea fans that said he would do nothing for Arsenal. He wouldn't deliver in any way, in any shape or in any form. But you start to look at the numbers now. And a lot of a lot of gooners were saying, well, what, what, what are we going to do about Xhaka? And his goals and his assists and what he gave us. Well, that's what, seven Premier League goals for Kai Havertz now? Declan Rice scored again today that I'm going to move on to in a moment. I'm going to say this now. I'm going to say this with chest. Kai Havertz has been a successful signing so far for Arsenal. It's £60 million well spent. He's scoring goals. He's creating. He's an important cog in the wheel. This notion and lie that was told at the beginning of the campaign that the, the football slowed down because of Kai Havertz. Arsenal are playing slower football <laughs> because of Kai Havertz. They're accommodating him. No, everybody that said that is wrong. And everybody that said what I did, everybody that, or a variation of what I said around, this was Arsenal tapering themselves. This was Arsenal keeping something back, holding something in reserve for this title race. Kai Havertz has been a success. Now, the most successful signing of the season, not just for Arsenal, but in the Premier League, potentially the whole of Europe, the only person that I think genuinely competes with him is Jude Bellingham. And that's Declan Rice. Declan Rice, in my opinion, has not dropped a stinker all year. He hasn't dropped below a 7.5 out of 10 in every game he's played in. This man scores goals. This man creates chances. This man is a instrumental cog in the will, in the machine that is Arsenal. And often when it comes to who's been the best transfer, who's been the best transfer of the season, people often like doing pound for pound. And I understand it and there's logic to it. They may say, well, Madison was only 35, 40 million. And look what he's delivered. Therefore, it's worth it. pound for pound. He's done a lot more than someone who costs 105. That's logical. Makes sense. But where I'm backing Declan Rice on this is that the way he's handled the 105 million pound price tag, the way he's handled turning down Man City to join Arsenal, that in itself is astronomical. Look how many of the big money signings, both domestically and abroad, have failed, have struggled, have, have not hit the heights that they should have done. Declan Rice has stood up in every single capacity, and today was no different. Whether it was his corner taking, winning the ball back in the middle, commanding that midfield. He's gone from the six role and holding the midfield to being an eight. A lot of people said he couldn't play eight. I remember Dean Jones on the Dundee show here, waxing lyrical for two years about how Declan Rice and his family and everyone around him sees him as more of an attack, not an attacking midfielder like an Odegaard or a Bruno or a KDB, but a box-to-box -box midfielder that can operate on the edge of the area. He's adding goals to his game. I'm not even sure how many that is for the season now for Declan Rice. Someone will tell me in the live comment section. I didn't bother look. There's got to be six or seven goals across all competitions. Somewhere close to that. It simply has to be. And Declan Rice for £105 million is delivered for me the most value in the league this season. Clutch moments, winners, goals, dominant performances and the leadership qualities that he has injected into Arsenal are nothing short of spectacular. And I thought today he was just phenomenal. And actually there was a lot of good performance today. I thought, I thought uh, Saka and Odegaard were a constant thorn in the side. I thought Ben White had another very good game, not just because of the assist in the inverted role that he plays. Yes, there was, there was a goal scored, but I thought defensively for the large majority of the game, Arsenal were pretty immaculate. I really did think you were good again in that area. So overall, I don't think there's too much for Arsenal to be disappointed about. They went a bit dull. They went a bit blunt, I would say, after the Rams down mistake. They lost a bit of cutting edge. I think some nerves came in. But the way they persevered through it, a result like today is going to send Arsenal to the next level. These are gateway moments. They are those moments that you'll look back on as Arsenal fans in the future and go, that was a turning point. And today was one of them. They absolutely was. And rivals are going to be salty. They're going to say that I'm twerking. But that's just because they're angry, especially Chelsea fans today. You know, and I've always praised, when Chelsea have been good on the terrace, I've praised them. And they've been bad, I've criticized them. But listen, Winter Surfer, if you're watching, Don, if you're watching, all the Chelsea fans like that owe Johnny Minerals an apology. Johnny Minerals is the only Chelsea fan that I've come across who criticized allowing Arsenal to have Kai Havertz. Yes, they got £60 million for him. But Arsenal have been sold an asset that's potentially going to help them win the Premier League. And if they do go on to win the Premier League now, six, I repeat that, at the minimum, six of those points were won by Kai Havertz winners so far. 
could reach nine, could reach 12 by the end of the season. Imagine Kai Havertz is the difference between Arsenal coming second or third and winning the Premier League. That is going to sting. That is going to hurt. That is going to, especially with the season that Chelsea are having, it is going to be like rubbing lemon and salt and coriander into an open wound. I don't know why I thought of coriander. I put some in some food earlier. I think that's why probably. It's going to hurt them so, so deeply indeed. It really is. Um, Talk about the penalties. Yeah, listen, I will, I will say that. I mean, Arsenal probably should have had two. There was a few refereeing decisions today that I looked at and thought were poor. So I've just waxed lyrical about Kai Havertz. He could have been sent off. He was already booked. He died for a penalty. Referee didn't see it in real time. Once a referee doesn't see it, there's nothing you can do. You can't retrospectively with VAR send him off. I thought he was a little lucky. However, there'll be a lot of people that will say, Brentford robbed. Arsenal should have had about two penalties before that and a couple of penalties after it, right? So if we're going to be fair, both uh, teams suffered with poor decisions today, in my humble opinion. The, the shirt put in from Brentford on Arsenal players in the box and it not being penalised at any point is crazy to me. Absolutely crazy to me. So like, I do think Kai Havertz will probably be sitting in that dressing room now when it all calms down he'll, and he'll probably be thinking, I'm lucky referee didn't see that. Lucky the referee didn't see it. But at the same time, Arsenal, what, turned down two or three? What I thought was stone wall penalties um, for me. So, yeah, that's that, that's my that's my th thoughts on those refereeing decisions. Again, rivals probably won't like it because I'm not saying that Arsenal cheated. But even if Arsenal got lucky, it's not Arsenal cheating. It's the referee making the mistake. And it's not as if Arsenal haven't suffered this year a few of those things either. Uh, let's go to some of your super chats before my panel comes out today, but hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to end my opening monologue by saying this. This Arsenal team is not just in the title race. They are th th Their chances of winning it are, all, are equally as good as Man City's and still slightly, depending on tomorrow's result. If there's a draw tomorrow, I think Arsenal might win this league. Liverpool win. They're my marginal favourites. If it's a draw tomorrow, I think Arsenal become the favourites from this point because Arsenal will, in my humble opinion, next week beat Manchester City that are going to come out all guns blazing. Counter-attack's going to kill them. It's going to be AJ-style counter-attack. One-two. That's what's going to happen, in my opinion. Do me a favour, people. Hit the like button if you haven't done so already. 8,000 people tuning in live, which is just absolutely phenomenal i want to shout out my brand new channel that i'm launching though football channel called the squad scan the qr code you can see on my screen or click on the pin comment in the uh, link in the pin comment section or in the description below go and check out the squad please i know a lot of you have gone over there and checked it out thousands of you i can tell because the qr code has been scanned but subscribe you don't want to miss the content when it starts 